Good. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> We're now continuing the Sicha, the speech of the Lubavitcher Rebbe that we began yesterday. <clears throat> and it's about the seventh day of Passover, which is going to be tonight. And that was the day that the Jewish people got out of, totally got out of Egypt that they, when they crossed the sea. They crossed the Red Sea, or the Yam, the Yam, the Yam Suf, they crossed over big miracle, miracles. And of course, the main miracle was that they went over the sea and they, they and they, they, all the Egyptians pursued them. They didn't catch them. And they, um, they drowned. God closed the sea on the Egyptians and the Jewish people got across and the Egyptians all drowned, all their, all their enemies of the Jewish people drowned. It says the Rebbe <clears throat> that it's, at first glance, that wasn't really uh, necessary to do. I mean, if God wanted to kill the Egyptians, he could have killed them in, 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 he could have just stopped creating them. I mean, God creates everything. He could have just stopped creating them. But in any case, any one of the, the 10 plagues was sufficient <clears throat> to decimate all the enemies of the Jews. What do they have to take? Why did God have to cr- split the sea? Not only that, it says that the same side that the Jews went into the sea, they came out just a few miles down. So they make this big, huge, huge U-turn. So they really didn't accomplish anything geographically or politically by going across the sea, right? God could have gotten their enemies. God could have just changed their enemies' minds if he wanted to, just give them all a big dream or something that, uh, you know, imagine how they're going to be destroyed if they chase the Jews and just get scared, not chase them. Make them all depressed. Huh? Depression is in some ways worse than even drowning, getting all depressed. God could have made the hit, smote the Egyptians with depression, well, why didn't he do that? But nevertheless, he didn't. He decided to split the sea. So the Rebbe said, and not only that, there's there's another thing. It says that when the Jews went across the sea, <clears throat> that they grew up from the ground trees, and that the trees immediately had fruit, and the Jews took the fruit and they fed it to the birds that were with them, and the birds sang with the Jewish people, thanks to God, when they crossed the sea. So the Rebbe said, if that's, if there's whatever was a, 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 an unnecessary miracle, it's that. And what, what did that possibly, how did that add in any way to <clears throat> the Jews going across the sea? How did that? So the Rebbe says, not so. Everything that God does is a purpose <clears throat> and a very, very deep purpose. If for no other purpose than to teach us a big lesson and to teach a lesson for the future generations. So the Rebbe said, okay, let's have a look at what went on over there when they left Egypt. So first of all, when when they they the the, 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 the going over the sea, this was a prep, this was a I'm sorry, this was the the final departure from Egyptian sovereignty. It killed all the Egyptian army, and that's it. There was no one pursuing them, so they were free. That was running from. Then the it's, the splitting of the sea also accomplished what they were running to. It was a preparation for giving of the Torah. And the giving of the Torah was a revelation of the essence of God to the Jewish people in the Torah. The Torah comes from the essence of God. In fact, the whole business of this whole thing of being in Egypt and going out of Egypt was only in, in order to receive the Torah. And the Torah was only in order for the Jewish people to go into the land of Israel and fix up the whole world. By means of this, they would fix up the sin of Adam. <clears throat> Except that was the whole idea of correcting the world. Adam, the first man, the Torah tells us that, that he was put in the world also to fix the world up. But that was to add more holiness. And now they had a double job. They had to get a, rid of the evil. That's leaving Egypt. And then to add on holiness, that's the idea of the Torah. It's supposed to be. And that was accomplished by the splitting of the sea. So let's see. <clears throat> so the Rebbe said, the splitting of the sea, the whole the, <clears throat> the whole world, the splitting of the sea was telling, trying to teach the Jews a message that the whole world depends on them. The whole world depends on <clears throat> how the Jews serve God. If the Jews do it properly, then the whole world will take example, and they'll also serve God. They'll also be interested in their creator and do everything they can to not let the creator down. Right? God is creating us, creating us with everything. 
So in other words, <clears throat> to think about the creator and not about myself so much, or at least to take the creator into account in the world, and not to be thinking about myself all the time. So <clears throat> that was the idea that the Jewish people, the Jewish people are there to serve God. That's the purpose. <clears throat> so it says that when the Jews got the mounts to, 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 the, to, the, to the, 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 the sea, as they, they were accusing angels that said, I mean, God, I think you're making a big mistake over here. These Jews, they're awful. They're just terrible. You know, they're, gonna, they're just going to let you down over and over again. And here you see they were in Egypt. They worshipped idols over there. They were worshipping idols. They knew it was forbidden to worship idols. It's forbidden even for the non-Jews to worship idols. It's part of the seven Noahic commandments. Every, every human being has to worship only the creator of the universe. The, 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 the Egyptians, they were massive idol worshippers. Everybody's worshipping idols. And the Jewish people did it with them. They knew it was wrong. You can't, they're no better than the Egyptians. So God said, and the Jewish people have two merits. One merit is the Torah. That's um, from, which was given from God's right arm, it says, Niamino Eish Dat Lomo, it says. And <clears throat> there's also prayer, or some people say it was tefillin, it's prayer, which prayer is what they're going to do. That's from below to above. That's like the left side. And on the merit of the Torah that they were going to accept, Torah and the commandments they were going to accept, and the prayers that they were going to make, is therefore the walls stood like <clears throat> the, the, the river became a walls on the right and the left. The right was the Torah and the left is the are the prayers. Now this idea that the world depends on the Jews, it wasn't just back then. And it's just not a nice you know, idea. I mean, it is a nice idea, but it's much more than that. This is what it means the Jews are the chosen people. The Jews are chosen in order to perfect the world, to tell the non-Jews how much God loves them. He's creating them to show everyone the goodness of God and how important it is to serve the Creator, how much we owe the Creator and how little He's asking from us in return. That's what the Jewish people are chosen for. <clears throat> and that's the whole idea of splitting of the sea. Splitting of the sea means the, the sea represents all the spiritual... Well, and, and here, in this case, the sea represents the creation. And the creation conceals the Creator. And the job of the Jewish people is, is to, so to sp speak, split the creation so that everyone can see that there's a creator on the dry land. The dry land is like revealing the truth, the creator. People stop worshiping, worrying about going to heaven and going to hell and going into spiritual things and about themselves. They'll start thinking about, hey, how can I serve the creator of the universe? So that's what that's what that was that was the preparation. Remember, remember that we learned, we learned that yesterday. So that's what it means that the wall, the 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 the, 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 the sea stood on the right and the left, and the merit of Jews learning the Torah and the Jews praying is that's how the whole world gets fixed up. That all the concealment, all the 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 how do you see the false things in the world, rather the spiritual things, the physical things, all the idolatry, all the the lust, and all of this. All, we'll all separate and we'll see there's a creator that's creating us. And that depends on the Jews. All right, that's what he said. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. We have to understand that Iber the Monter Bira, this previous explanation that I just told you, right, we learned yesterday. Is the nor benoke than Svetin and only regarding the second thing was is given by Chris Yamsuf by splitting of the sea, namely preparation for the giving of the Torah. This prepared the Jewish people for the Torah, namely the wall stood on the right side that's Torah, the left side that's prayer, how the Jewish people serve God, and etc. Abar Bad Benokea regarding Su Retavin Zich from Mitzrayim. What about? Saving themselves from the Egyptians, a rupnem and them kitru taking away from elu ve'elu. What about the the prosecution, <clears throat> the charge that was against the Jews, that hey these people these Jews they they served idol, idols, 
in Egypt, just like the Egyptians did. What about that? It would have been enough. There's a who's from Ein sort of order. It would have been enough just to say the Jews are going to get the Torah. Or the Jews have prayer. But for especially the merit from receiving the Torah. Was Durach them, which by means of this, was Zich Ofted, and Had Zich Ofted, this accomplished the Bechira Bakal Amin, that the Jewish people, it says they, be, they became the chosen people of all the nations, right? When God gave the Torah, it says He chose us. I share Bokhar Banu, we call Amin, and Asan Lanus Torah, so that God chose us from all the people, and He gave us His Torah. For was their tale, the Torah, why does the Torah say, Why does it have to say that the water was for them? A wall from the right and the left. Nitblo is not only by them Hemshech, but Gomer Kriyas Yamsu, not only by the finishing uh, when the Jews crossed already, nor by the Tehillah, even by the beginning. The Yavo, when the Jewish people went into the sea, it says that the water, the wall, the 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 the, 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 the river, the water stood up like a wall on the right side and on the left side. The right side says the Rebbe is the merit of the Torah. The left side is the merit of prayer. <clears throat> Where we could say the commandments, that this is the tefillin. So what do you have to have both? What do you have to have the right and the left? In order to get out of Egypt and to get and to, to, <clears throat> to get rid of the charges that were against them, that they were idolaters, it would have been enough just to say, hey, they, good, maybe they were idolaters, but at Mount Sinai, God, God is going to choose them. That's enough to get them out of Egypt. Not only that, just physically, logically, thinking about it, right? If the river is running, if you have a wall on one side, so that stops the water. It's like a dam, right? A dam stops the water. So make the wall just on one side, and then they can go over the... What do you have to have both sides? Also in the merit of prayer, and also in the merit of Torah. Why both? Was thus is nogea, nor to them hatzala from Yitzhiya This would be enough. Just the Torah would be enough to save the Jews from this, these charges against them, this prosecution that they worship idols. They're going to receive the Torah. One wall is enough. Is there beer in them? The, the explanation is like this. The talk is from Yetzirah Mitzrayim. The purpose of going out of Egypt is receiving the Torah. Therefore, therefore, is built by the Erster Mo, by the first time, was the Abish to which God had gezakt to Moshe, which God said to Moshe, that in Yetzirah Mitzrayim, going out of Egypt, Remember by the burning bush over there. Is hot there in Gezog, he said, the Matan Torah, I'm going to take the Jews out of Egypt in order that they can serve God on this mountain. In which mountain? What was the burning bush? The burning bush was on Mount Sinai. And God said to Moses, See this mountain where this burning bush is? <clears throat> right? Here's they're going to serve, they're going to receive the Torah in order to know how to serve me. When Azoyoich bowed and, and so also immediately in the Ershta Dibur, the first commandment of the Ten Commandments, that money remembered, God mentioned, I am God that took you out of Egypt. When the Reber, so therefore, Hot their Gomer Yetzirah Mitzrayim, the finishing of going out of Egypt, namely when drowning the Egyptians, was thus as given, which this was, like we said in the beginning, <clears throat> when, this, when the when this, when the Yam Suf. When it's split, Gedarv <coughs> Zion, it has to be in a zone often in such a way, can and bring in, which it can bring, Zion, it can bring in Zion, Me'ayin, Ha'inyan, something like Matan Torah. What had happened to Matan Torah when God gave the Torah? Nidblois haben zich de Yidin, Gedarv, Retavim, not just saving the Jews from the evil of Egypt. Was does as gekent zayin durech avoda in kav in ein kav, which saving the Jews from one way, from one side. This could have been done by one, either by means of their prayers or by means of their, their receiving the Torah. One was good enough just to be saved from Egypt. Rabbi, you see, you're right. Kafi agbalat teva, according to nature, right? The nature of the Jews, let's say, is to be intellectual people, so they have the Torah. Well, let's say the nature of the Jews is to be emotional people, or each one can take whichever he wants to. You remember what we said before, that why do they have to be two walls? The Jews would change their nature. If there's some people that are more intellectual, they're very cold emotionally. Those people had to be emotional and pray also. Then there's people that are very emotional. They're not so good at, at you know, at, at, at praying 
at, at, at learning Torah. They can't sit down. They have what is it called? ADHD. They can't sit and learn. They but they're praying. The emotional things they can get attached to. This is those people have to learn Torah. Also, they have you have to do both. Force yourself to change your nature. By means of that, the Jewish people change their natures. God changes the nature of the world. Remember that we learned that before. <clears throat> Says the Rebbe, in order to be saved from Egypt, either one of these things was good enough, to learn the Torah or to pray. Because by means of such service, just learning the Torah, is possible to go out from bad. Nor is they have gamuz, or royske in Gansen, but they had to go totally out. Oh. From <clears throat> any sort of limitations. Durch their avoda by means of this service, as by the kavan by both both sides, left and right, <clears throat> to be intellectual, to be emotional. When the riber therefore had the choma miyaminam, therefore the wall from the right to the left had to be also immediately when they left going to Egypt. What's he saying? The whole purpose of going out of Egypt was to receive the Torah. The whole essence of <clears throat> the whole essence of receiving the Torah is changing your nature. Changing your nature and changing the nature of the world. And because the whole world depends on the Jews, so therefore the Jews had to always remember that they could not serve God just according to the way they liked, according to their nature. You couldn't say, listen, it's enough, I'm doing something, I'm serving God, I'm not like the Egyptians, I'm going out, it's not enough. The Jewish people had to Remember that serving the essence of God is changing your nature. And by means of that, it'll change the nature of the whole world. Because nature in its essence is a very, very good thing. But also, if that, that's only in its essence. It's like you have ground that has a gold mines in there. On the surface, it's just dirt. Dirt is worth nothing. But if you know that there's gold or diamonds or something underneath, so you dig. You did the same thing the Jewish people, you have to, but you have to change nature. You have to break into the land. You have to, the same thing the Jewish people, it's not just enough if they serve God from one way. Serving God is a wonderful thing, right? Learning the Torah, fantastic. <clears throat> and it's a good thing to do one or the other, but it's not sufficient. It has to be done from both sides. Now, this is based on this, on this really strange axiom that God really did choose the Jewish people and that the whole world depends on the Jewish people to be improved. And without the Jewish people, the world will not be improved. The world will stay the way it is. People will worship idols like the Egyptians did. They'll be successful like the Egyptians did. But the world won't be the way that God wants it to be. God wants the world to be in a place where he is revealed, where the world is a perfect place. Right? The, the whole being of Egypt the whole success of Egypt depended on their making the Jews suffer, making the Jews slaves. That's not a good world where the success of one person depends on the defeat of the other person. <clears throat> That's a very temporary and a very false sort of happiness. If, you're, if your peace of mind depends on somebody else's <clears throat> the, the suffering, it can't be a good thing like that. If, though, on the other hand, everybody realizes <clears throat> that there's a creator and the creator loves us and the creator is creating us all the time, the creator is infinitely close to us, but we have to dig in order to see it, just like diamonds, they're there, you're standing right on top of a diamond mine, but you don't know. So the whole essence depends on the Jews. The Jews, the only way the Jews can do it is by changing nature, just like you have to dig underneath, the Jews have to change it. Changing nature, says the Rebbe, implies that you must serve God, that's a big change in nature, and that's not enough. You have to serve God in both ways, both from intellect and both from emotion, both on the right side, so to say, accepting what God gives us, and also changing prayer, changing the world. <clears throat> so therefore, there has to be both things immediately when they went into the, the, the sea, because going into the sea was just a preparation for receiving the Torah, and the Torah is a preparation for fixing up the whole entire world. 
a tiefer beer and a deeper explanation is Durch Deva voted by means of uh, if a Jew serves God only on one side, is nit nor vas men kumt nit su the taklis, you don't reach the ultimate purpose, namely a preparation for giving of the Torah, nor is felt that is lacking also the whole idea of going out of Egypt. Yetherzach, everything was is the lamata, which is here in the physical world, at the shores lamaila as a source from above. The shores from Mitzrayim, spiritual world, that's what Kabbalah is about. The source of Egypt in this physical world, the source from Mitzrayim, the Le'umadzeh, v'shteret to Torah v'mitzvahs, there's what's called Egypt, the Egypt limitations, which prevent a person from, <clears throat> from getting excited, from, I just say, uh, increasing in learning Torah and the commandments, and the, the Afsharias and the possibility that there can be such a thing as Egypt. Egypt namely means being satisfied with what you are, staying in your own limitations, your own, what they call it in English, comfort zone, is Mitzrayim the Kedusha. <clears throat> The possibility that there can be evil in this world, that a person can be satisfied just by doing things that are even against God, this comes from the fact that there's Mitzrayim the Kedusha, that there's limitations and comfort zones in holiness. Mitzrayim the Kedusha means, as men dim to that you serve God in an oven from mates of a gabul, but in a limited way. Hagbala v'sateva. Right? I'm a religious Jew, that's enough. What I did yesterday, I'll do today. What I do today, I'm going to do tomorrow. Like I said, Teva from Nefesh Bahamis, the nature from the animal soul, or even the nature from the, from the godly soul. The Reber is Oib Mendint, the Ebersh, if you serve God in a begrenst of Oifen, in a limited way, namely what's called Mitzrayim, of holy Mitzrayim, holy limitations, as this can be a bad thing. Is man not nit? Bavorant from Israel, you're not yet free from Egypt from the other side. Chach as because in its moment, in this moment, is air arose from Israel, the Lumaze. Even though that right now he's not doing anything bad, air hot as by Zich, but he is, Mevatel Gavan is Vibalt, and namely he's totally surrendered to God right now. But Vibalt is the Shorish. They're from the source of Mitzrayim, the Kedusha, is nor forbidden, but because he can be satisfied with where he is, with his limitations, <clears throat> as, that still remains, as can as Nach, Amol, Zion, Chose can wake wake up again. The, the, the veg to Bavern, and the, again, he can wake up again and he can start doing bad things. The veg to Bavern and Zich from Mitzrayim, the Luma said, is a ray skin from my Mitzrayim the Kedush. You have to go out from Mitzrayim of holiness. Din and the by serving God in all Akavim, in all ways, on the right side and on the left side. Oichen azavod of us ken, was his kegen, teva un metzius, which is against his nature. Okay, listen, what the Rebbe is saying is like this. Listen, I, I, for, for a long time, I had a yeshiva and there was a lot of young men that came. And a lot of the young men or what they call Bali Chuva, boys that weren't religious, and they became religious, they decided they're going to become religious Jews. They saw the goodness of, 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 uh, of the Torah and the commandments, and the, they were happy to be Jews, and they felt the, the, the closeness of God and the miraculousness of God, and, and the whole idea of, of just being part of the Jewish people and doing the commandments was a big, brand new thing for them. So they jumped out. They jumped out of their old whatever they were, Right? They used to be an artist or whatever it is, and they jumped out and they started doing Torah and the commandments. And that was a big thing. It was very exciting. And But then the time goes on, and, and they learn the Torah when they're learning a new a tractate in the Gomorrah, and they learn a new idea in Hasidut, and everything becomes very exciting. But then all of a sudden, what happens is they get used to it. Right? They're used to it. At the beginning, the changes were very big, massive changes, and it was very exciting. But afterwards, the changes... They become very, how do you say, very uh, 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 sophisticated, small changes, a person's personality. You have to get rid of your anger, right? You're doing Torah, you're doing commandments all the time. Once a week, 
once a month, right? He gets angry at something. He gets angry. Somebody says a word he doesn't like. Somebody takes his chair. Somebody whatever it is, and he gets angry. You no, know, getting angry says it's like worshiping idols. Oh, but come on, you know. I mean, I've, I'm 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 doing good all the time. What's so the Rebbe says? Listen, the fact of the matter is, is that a person that he does he gets angry. He has a lustful thing, a lustful thought. Says this. Says why is this? The reason is because he's not always going out of Egypt. The way he's learning Torah and the way he's doing the commandments is he's gotten used to it. Right? He's gotten used to it. He's, he's not involved totally in serving the creator. He's not always going out of Egypt. He's not always looking for a new way. Now you can say, how can I look for a new way? What are you talking about? I'm already doing the commandments. I'm doing everything. But that, that's true. But deepness, depth, and enthusiasm, there's no end to it. There's no end to it. And it's almost like anything else. You know, a person is married, let's say, getting married. So we can always find new aspects to appreciate, appreciation, to appreciate new aspects of marriage. His wife, his house, his children, he can go and do things. Appreciation. Also, you can do things, do new things. Right? Or you can just change yourself, right? change your whole attitude toward life. In any case, a person also always has to be dynamic and also has to be going on. And how do you do this? By going against your nature. That's the point, going against your nature. A person going against his nature and changing his nature, doing holy things that he doesn't like to do, going to a learning Torah, he likes to pray. So he, he like to do good prayer, pray, pray more deeply, but also to learn Torah. It always has to be constantly to find new ways of serving God. And the Rebbe always stressed this, right? That they, they once asked the Rebbe, I think I told you about this, they came and interviewed the Rebbe on BBC and they said, are you happy? And the Rebbe said, I'm happy, but I'm not satisfied. That should be a basic thing all the time. And the Rebbe said even more that if we see that any place in the world, even in the farthest corner of the world, there's somebody that doesn't know about his own creator, that God is creating him, or there's a Jew that doesn't know about Torah and commandments, should make you feel bad at least to pray for that person, at least to do something. But it should be always on our mind that we should never be satisfied with our own situation. We should always be happy, never satisfied. So that says the Rebbe, that's the whole point of going out of Egypt. When they went out of Egypt from the right and on the left, it says the right and the left. Some people are more tendency to the right, right? More kindness or more intellect, intellectual. Some people are more into, on, the, on the left to, to pray. Or maybe we can say it another way. Some people are more into appreciating things. Other people are more into more doing things, right? So it's just very nice. It's good, but you have to go against your nature. A person that you're into doing things, you have to appreciate what there is. A person you're just in appreciating what there is, you have to do things also. It was to change your nature. Everyone can find this inside of themselves, but never to remain static, never to remain, you say, to be satisfied with who I am. Always to be happy with what you've got, but always know that the reason that we're in the world is to do more, to change more, change our attitude, appreciate more. Vav. I'll be saying, according to this, that men oik for shtim, we can also stand, which the, there's a commandment to remember going out of Egypt every day. And this has to be by every Jew, whether we're talking about a Jew that's very low level, or we're talking about a person that's, he's, he's, a, he's a person that does sins, doesn't care about Torah commandments, or a person that he's, he's always fighting, trying to do the best thing, or a tzaddik that he doesn't even have to fight. He's just interested in doing more good, etc. The highest, holiest Jew and the simplest, whatever, you know, with the biggest sinner has to remember going out of Egypt every day. You can understand the person that is a totally holy Jew. He has to always remember going out of Egypt. This is understandable. Why? Because a Jew has to always connect himself with God. And because God is infinite and a person who is a tzaddik, he feels God. So he feels how, no matter how high he is, he always feels that he has to, and, and no matter how he's, he elevates himself in service of God, is this the God be a hecha, there's always something higher. I think that you can see that in everything, right? I think that in everything that there is, the higher a person gets in something, the more he realizes that there's the more perfection to be reached, right? That they say that there was, uh, I read something by Sir Isaac Newton, that he was, Arguably, the, the greatest uh, mind that ever uh, the, the, in, in mathematics, in any case, in physics that ever existed, uh, in, in physics that ever existed. 
And he said at the end of his life that he felt that he was just walking on a, the edge of a huge ocean of knowledge and that he succeeded in picking up one little pebble from the seashore. In other words, the closer he got to understanding the world, the more he realized that there was the same thing. A person who's a tzaddik, the closer he gets to understanding God, the more he realizes that he has to go out of his own limitations. Egypt means limitations. Noch al, it's an Indian from Mitzrayim. He realizes that no matter how high he is, that he always has to go higher. Therefore, he has to every day mention, remember, going out of Egypt. But it's not, not understand. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not understandable. We can mensu noiferen the Yitzis Mitzrayim from a tzaddik gomor was oich zayin Mitzrayim is a madrega nalis from kedusha with the Yitzis Mitzrayim from nidro kedavis. How can we compare going out of Egypt? A person that's very, very high, uh, that he realizes what God is, and the God is infinite, to a person that's very low and he has no connection to God whatsoever, what's he supposed to do? How is he going to go out of He doesn't. He thinks he's okay the way he is. As B is the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim from the Umaset. What about people that are really doing bad, they're doing bad things? When Zogan is the Allah, Zainan, Mekayim, the Zalba Mitzvah, they're doing the same commandment. Whether we're talking about a person who's a big tzaddik, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Baba Sali, these are people that are tremendously huge tzaddikim, right? And that they, they're supposed to go out of Egypt every day. But you can understand because the, the, they know what God is. They know God is infinite. So they have an infinite way to go. But a person that's a, that doesn't do any Torah, doesn't do any commandments, doesn't have nothing to do with God whatsoever, maybe a little tiny bit once he goes to his shul on Yom Kippur or something like that, he's supposed to go out of Egypt every day. He thinks he's okay. He thinks the fact that he goes to the, to the synagogue once a year that he's fulfilled all of his, he's gone out of Egypt. He's done more than what he wants to. If he could, he would have stayed home. But some reason he finds himself in synagogue on Yom Kippur. That's enough. How can you expect him to go out of Egypt every day? <clears throat> Is there beer in them? They say that the saying that King Solomon was so so smart. He was the, he was the smartest man in the world, wisest man. He said he was even smarter than a fool. He says, why? Because a fool thinks that he's smarter than everybody. He thinks he's smarter than everybody. And King Solomon was so smart that even the fools were willing to admit that he's smarter than them. I'm smarter than everyone in the world. Right? They say there's no greater foolishness than thinking you're smarter than everybody. A fool says I'm smarter than everybody. I know it all. One exception, King Solomon. He's the one, I don't, I, the fool doesn't know anything whatsoever. Knows what, nothing whatsoever. He says, but nevertheless, he in his egotism and in his own ignorance, in his own Egypt, he's so closed up that he thinks he's the smartest. He thinks there's nobody else except for him. So how can you expect a person like this to go out of Egypt all the time? Maybe when he sees King Solomon, right? He sees the Lubavitcher Rebbe, then maybe. But we're saying, no, even without that, he has to go out of every day. How can it be? The explanation is, Val Oich de Hexter Madrid is even the highest level of going out of Egypt. Is for Bund and it's connected with going out of Egypt of bad things. Oy, but Tzadik, have a great Tzadik, Goma. So by Zich, Beshlossim, makes a decision. As he is for him, Genug, it's enough. The Madriga, wherever he is, by Velcha, where which he is now standing. And he doesn't have to go any higher. Ervet Zich, Upshlossim, he can make the decision. He, up, up stolen, he can stay by Mitzrayim the Kedusha, whichever level of holiness that he's in. Afilu and Agor, Haicha Madriga, even no matter how high level he is, is our Viga Zachfri, like we said before, Mitzrayim the Kedusha assures the, the Egypt of holiness, namely a person saying, I'm I'm holy enough, I've gotten a good enough level. <clears throat> That's why, by the way, it says that the main thing of big Tzadikim is that they're humble. It says that Moses the Torah praises Moses. He was the most humble person in the world. Why was he so humble? Because he realized that he was nothing. And the higher that he got, the, everything, the more he realized that everything I have is just a gift from God. And I have to use it. God gave me these gifts to use them. And I'm not using them as, as much as I should. That means he's always wanting to go higher and higher. But as soon as the tzaddik decides, listen, why do I have to be humble for? I'm better than everybody else. I'm greater than everybody else. My people are coming to me, asking me for blessings. My picture is on everybody's wall. That's enough. I don't need any more. He says, ooh, a tzaddik that gets to such a level, 
this is a giving of, this is a, a, a this opens up a door for Mitzrayim, the other side of Mitzrayim, of the opposite side, of people really doing bad things. They're, like that's what it says, that the world depends on the Jews. As soon as the Jews are satisfied with what they are, then that affects the whole world, right? That opens the door to, to, to Pandora's box, how do they say? They're vague to Bavarn, Zich from Mitzrayim, the Lumas are the way that we can prevent the, prevent, protect ourselves from getting to really evil Egypt. As Zolnit Zion Kain Upstel, you should never stop. Kain Agbala in Avodah Hashem, no limitation in serving God. As standing that constantly, Yedder Tug every single day, Zol the Avodah Zion and all the Hecher should be in a higher and higher way. The Hoich Men Zolnit Zion, higher, no matter how high you are today. Darv Yedder Tug Zion had Achlata, every day a person has to make a decision. Be the Rebbe had to tell, like the Rebbe said, Dan Hagar from Hasidim, and Hasidim was, as they flagged in Zagan, they would say, ah, Morgan Darv Zion, upstand, going under, uh, going under. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up totally a different person. Right? These were the, by the, by the Hasidim. And these Hasidim, they learned Torah all the time, and they prayed, and they were doing good deeds, and they were always open to the troubles of others, and et cetera, and et cetera. And nevertheless, they said, it's, tomorrow it has to be totally better. So that's the idea of Egypt. Egypt is not just a place that's bad. Egypt means limiting yourself to where you are. Limiting to yourself. I don't have to add on any good things. I don't have to be any humble. A little bit of egotism is okay. A little bit of, of what do you say, being self-satisfaction. According to this, that we can also understand, for for we can also answer why Kriyas Yamsuf, there had to be the trees, with the fruits, <clears throat> which were, and they grew up with, and the, immediately with fruits on the trees, they grew up, and they gave the fruits to birds. Now, usually you have to plant trees, you plant it, it takes a long time for it to grow, and then it takes time for the fruits to appear, and then the fruits have to ripen, and then after that, they didn't have time, and, and they were going through the sea, how long did it take them to go through the sea? A few hours. So they, it says immediately, they didn't plant any trees, the trees just grew up on their own, and all of a sudden, there were fruits on the trees, and they were they gave it to the birds, and the birds saying, what, "What's this got to do with godliness, with Jewishness, with anything?" Varun, because this is nit given at given. This is not just an extra miracle, nor a prat. This is a, a this was a, a necessary detail from the whole idea of going out of Egypt. <clears throat> in a kernel, in a seed, thus for plants, when we plant, is there in the earth? Is gefin sich shoyin the ganzen boim with all appears in the seed is already in potential the entire tree with all the fruits that it's going to give birth to. Was this vaccine which will give afterwards? Nit more. Was it's gefin sich them alts in their grain behelim. Even more that which we find that in the seed in hidden that is hidden in the seed. All of the, the tree and the fruits and, and the seeds that are in the tr- fruits and the future trees that come on his darf nemen site, but it has to take time, is them come to rise until it comes out on on vert unplugged until it's revealed. On thus that was the fruits will be better and that the, and the, the fruits can get better and better. Ultimate site. The more time that it stays in the ground, right? You leave them, take the fruits before they're ripened, it's not good. Nachmer, even more. Afilu in them, koach even in the power of growth, which is in the ground, we can also find concealed all of the fruits and things which will grow, trees which will can potentially grow. But because the growth from a, a plant is not really a brand new thing, yesh miyayin. Right? When you plant a seed in the ground, so what happens is that it just wakes up the power of growth in the ground. And that power of growth in the ground, that's what makes the seed grow up. Right? Plant a seed in water, something like that doesn't grow up. So this is all in potential. So in the ground is the potential for the, 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 the trees to grow, and the trees there's the potential for the, the fruits, and the fruits have the potential the credit at the time of the growing when the Jews crossed over the sea, 
they made by Zeravuda, because of their service of they, they were serving God, is on this Galaver and the Helen Nitnor by Zichalain, they revealed not only their hidden service of God, nor Oich, but also the Chalik from Velt, the part of the world which had a connection to them. And the ground that they were stepping on suddenly revealed all of its potential. Is Bechdein orders the Yidden, Yiddish kinder so that the children they could feed the birds, Velcha Haben Mitkin, which the which flew together, they accompanied the Jews, a Zain and Mizgala that was revealed in the Elonas, <clears throat> they were revealed trees and they had fruits, Velcha Haben Zich, Yifun and Behelem, which were concealed in the power of growth which is in the ground. When Oich and also the Garinim, also with the seeds and the fruits which were concealed in the, in the trees. So what's going on? The Jews, the whole job of the Jews is to reveal the potential which is concealed in everything. God created the world in such a way that there's what's called potential and actual. Just think about it one second. Why is it that in order for a child to be born, right? we're saying every human being is a miracle, everything is a miracle, life is a miracle. Why is it that in order for people to be born, it has to be a natural process, right? That, that there has to be a, a man, a female, a male. There has to be a, 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 a marriage. And they have to, the, 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 the woman becomes pregnant. And then the child starts growing. The child starts growing. It grows a little bit and it grows more and more. It takes months and months. And finally, after the, all the months are finished, then the baby comes out. Right, so any normal person will see that this is not a godly thing at all. This is a natural process. It happens by animals. It happens by, by the, even but you put on, put a seed in the ground. It's a natural process. Why does it have to be in such a way that it's natural? Why can't it be? If you really want to see that every human being is made in the image of God, it should be that a couple gets married, and they pray. They pray. They go into a room and they pray with all their might, all their this, and then the next day all of a sudden comes out from the next room, a human being 20 years old, like Adam, like the first man, 20 years old, all finished. Oh, then we see it's a big miracle. Then, 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 then there's no, no, no problem. We see that everybody's made from God. <clears throat> right? First of all, if that even if that happened, it probably wouldn't work because we see it didn't work by Adam himself. Adam himself was created and he, we see that he immediately went against God. Okay, number one. But number two, God wants to hint to us that everything in the world has potential. Everything in the world is pregnant. Everything in the world has a is, is concealed inside of it. Good life, reality, a new reality, and that's the job of the Jews is to reveal this. So when the Jews went across the Am Suf, that's when they began this whole process of revealing the good potential which is concealed in everything and eventually in everyone. The deck from Yom Suf, the concealment from the sea, the, the ground from the sea is earth. Domen. What is it? Mineral. Mineral. The Nidrich from the Sugin, the lowest type of creation is mineral. Earth has no power of motion. It has no power of understanding. And thus, mean, this means as Gilea Helam revealing what's concealed inside of the sea is by means, <clears throat> was first of all, it means that even the, the, the mineral, the lowest, the ground, which is dead. From them domem, as Zion and Oiskevax, and they grew up fruits. What's fruits? This is already a higher level of life, which is called vegetable. Vegetable is mineral. Above that is vegetable. Vegetable grows. It moves. It reacts. For Chazayin and Geven, a Michael, this is food, which is fit for the birds. What are birds? Birds are animal. <laughs> These are flesh and blood. <clears throat> which come from the blood, and, and, and this is animal. So if so, the mineral became plant, because the mineral had in it the potential to grow plant. Plant has potential to feed the animal. Was the fegelach and the, the birds, mitgezen, and they sang together with the Jews. Jews are human. So here we have the four different types of life. We have mineral, plant, animal, human. Elevating from below to above, the potential in Un, the Yidden, Abin Gesungen, Shir, and the Jews, they sang with God. 
which that's the whole purpose of the whole creation. So it ends up that the ground was singing together with, with God. They, they made the, even the ground come alive. Thus, as this means, by Kriyas Yamsu, by the splitting of the sea, it was revealed the concealment from what's concealed in the lowest, most dead aspect of creation, physical earth. And finally, it was elevated to Tzomeach, plant, and then animal, chai, and then human, and then God. <clears throat> So what do we see? By the Jewish people changing their nature from the right and the left, Torah and prayer, and changing their natures all the time, and never being satisfied with what they are, they can go out of Egypt and they can reveal the, the what is concealed, what is in Egypt and the whole entire world, the good potential which is locked inside of the world, like the Jews were locked inside of Egypt. By the Jews changing their nature, they reveal miracles in the world. They reveal the potential, what's hidden inside of every. I think I've said this before, but I want to say it again. I heard a long time ago, this is before I was religious, I think. I heard on the radio an argument between two economists. One economist said that he represents 99 point something percent. And we're talking about 50, who knows, years ago, 60 years ago. <clears throat> One of them said that uh, he represents 99 point something percent of the, the economists. And the other one, he represents this, you know, 0.001% of the economists. The one said, the one that represented 99% said that there's not enough, there, there's too many people in the world. Too many people in the world, it's a, it's a scientific fact. There's not going to be enough food. There's not going to be enough the air. There's not going to be enough water. There's not going to be, there's going to be pollution. It, it's going to cause that everybody's going to die. It's just going to be bad for everybody. So we have to make some sort of a, a selection or a, a whatever it's like, a, a, um, a, a, a rarification <clears throat> delusion the dilute the world population <clears throat> something like that he said the 99 percent of the psych of the, they, they agree with me in one way or another there's too many people in the world there's gonna have to be a war or something like that something you know that'll that'll uh, the, 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 uh, minimize the, the population of the world the other one said he represents uh one point zero zero whatever is one percent he says there's not enough people in the world there has to be more people in the world more people oh, this other guy said, more people, are you mad? You don't want to, you want to kill us all? You know, the, the, we have to silence this man. He said, no, I'll tell you why. He said, because <clears throat> we see that in the world that, uh, that uh, inventions that have improved mankind were by one person, two people, right? Electricity, penicillin, right? The, the, these are vitamins. These are, right, in, invented by one person. The more people that are in the world, is the more chance that that one person will come along and that he will reveal the potential. In other words, there's hidden potential. The, the, the Bhavachar Rebbe says even more than in every single human being, there's hidden potential for good. It doesn't have to be some of these world sweeping, you know, the inventions where there's in, infinite potential for good in every single human being. And it doesn't make any difference who, where, in every single human being, there's infinite potential for good. And that's the job of the Jewish people is to reveal this. And the more people in the world, the more potential there is and the more good can be revealed. Allah Sifuram, all the stories of the Torah, they are a teaching for us and how to serve in day-to-day -day life. Ubafran, and especially the Pratim from the things that would happen in, in the splitting of the sea, which meant, and <clears throat> which we mentioned, we Jews, we mention every single day about going over the sea, right? We sing the, in their prayers, they say that the song that the Jewish people sang after <clears throat> yeah, I think everybody in the world knows the story. I, I, pray, I don't know, maybe not. People in China and this, maybe they don't know. <clears throat> the story of the Jews crossing over the sea, pretty uh, impressive. Says the Rebbe, Yedder talk every day. <clears throat> Therefore, you point a Jew has to cause by him, bring about by himself. So I'm plecking to reveal what is concealed inside of his soul, the good inside of his soul. When thus drink zichois, in Dina, and this can be expressed, is expressed by serving God without any limitations. In all the kavim, in every way, learning Torah, the right side, prayer, and commandments on the left side. <clears throat> when done and then, is nor is not only 
I mean, you have to remember that when you learn, you're learning God's Torah, it's not just a book in the library. It's not, you know, you're not, it's not the, 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 the commandments are connecting to God. This is not just our, our heritage. It is our heritage, but it's, this is connecting to God right now. Infinite. It's infinite. You have to think about this, what this means. Undan is not, no, it's not only was Eris Barvorant. He's protected from going out of Egypt and the bad, bad Egypt, and there's falling into lust or to the depression, aggression, well, all these things. Nor as feared Zich by him, or is the Tachlis, it also can not only <clears throat> will he be protected from bad, but he can also do good, the purpose of going out of Egypt. Hachanatsumatan Torah, the preparation for receiving the Torah. And even more, a preparation for the future redemption. Like the rabbis say, Il if the Jewish people would not have sinned at Mount Sinai, where they worshiped the golden calf, there would have been redemption immediately. As Volt Yetzias Mitzrayim, Gavena Gu'ulash Lemi, would have been a complete redemption. All the Jews were all together. They would have gone into the land of Israel, and that was it. They would have built the third temple. And where the first temple would have been the third temple. Was done, which then, but Nizgalavaran, the Alokus, would be revealed, the hidden godliness which is hidden even in the physical world. Every stone will yell out, I'm a creation, I'm a miracle. A zoivi si is given, just like it was when the sea split. A si is nizgala given that was revealed, the concealment, which was concealed even in the physical stones. Nor by creation, but by the splitting of the sea. These gazakfri, like we said before, is their dealer, the revelation was temporary. But this gave a, a, the, the ability, the power, the potential. As Nachman Torah, that after giving the Torah, Zolan Yidin Kain Oiften, the Jews could have brought about service, the Zelber Giluyim from Kriyas Yamsuf, and an Ofen Kavua could have been in a permanent way. That was the whole idea that God wanted the Jews to go into Israel immediately, and that in Israel they would meet the challenges that were there. And they would do the impossible. They would make this physical world into a holy place. But it's not impossible because it already is holy. It's but only holy in potential. And they had to bring out the potential into reality. And they could do it permanently. Because God is creating the world permanently. I mean, the, the world he's creating it all the time. Here we are. Right? We just don't see it. We don't feel that it's God doing it. Therefore, therefore, Zainab by grace of Tzadikim, therefore the greatest, the greatest Tzadikim, Gevan, Atigiluim, were the same with revelations as Durek Zeravoda, by means of their service, in Domem Gezen, the Elokus was in them. And that the, the, it says that there were, in fact, even afterwards, Siddiquim, the followers of the Baal Shem Tov, etc., that they could see even physical things, they could see the godliness. Like it says that, that the Ultra Rebbe, by the first Rebbe of Chabad, that he once said, Kukendik Oifa Kora, he looked at a, a beam on the ceiling. And he said, I can only see the godliness which is enlivening him. This is the altar Rev, the first Rebbe of Chabad before he was passed away. And soon, because we have to remember, when, when you see godliness, it doesn't mean that the world disappears. That suddenly there's no, so like, you know, there's intense light and you can't see anything. It means you just see the true meaning I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just extrapolating from what the Rebbe is saying. I've never done this. But the, 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 the fact is, is that godliness is really everywhere. And it's, it's comprehensible by everybody. It should be. But the reason it's not is because the future redemption hasn't come. Something, something is lacking. But it's there in potential. And the splitting of the sea was what protect, was showed, it, that it showed us that it's possible. That the whole world, even the ground, can reveal its potential. When the curve of Mamish and soon, that this Nizgala will be revealed to everyone. Nigla Kavoda Vaya, like it says, what's going to be when Mashiach comes? The glory of the Creator will be revealed. The row called Basar, and all flesh will see, Kipi Hashem Diber, that God is the one that's creating us. Passing in Isaiah. As it vet unkeplect, it will be revealed. And on Mivet. Zen, and we can see the word of God, which is in every single thing. And this is one of the main aspects of the Geula Miti Tashlema, the true, complete redemption. Al Yudei, by means of Mashiach Tzikenu, 
by means of the Mashiach, Bekorov Mamash, soon, really. So that's tonight, when we celebrate the going out of Egypt, we can celebrate the power that God gave us, the secret that God revealed to us, that everything in the world is a secret. Everything in the world is a mystery. Life is amazingly interesting and alive, and our potential is infinite, but our responsibility is also infinite. And that enough should give us the power and the encouragement from the Creator Himself that any second Mashiach will come and just reveal the Creator in His creation, as it was back then when they split the sea, when the sea split, but in a permanent way. Good. Now let's learn. Now, yom yom. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, here we got. Here, look at this. Here we go. Yom yom. <clears throat> we'll have to do three because tomorrow, Friday, is a holiday. And Shabbos, of course, is Shabbos. In America, Shabbos is also a holiday because in America, outside of Israel. But I'm in Israel. So one Passover, Rav Chaim Avram, it was one of the sons of the first Rebbe of Chabad, went to his brother, the Mitla Rebbe, to wish him good Yom Tov. He said that the altar Rebbe said, on Pesach, you don't offer a person food and drink, but the guest can help himself. There's a long story about this. That Once there was a, a, a chassid that he went to this big rabbi's house in Chabad, and he refused to eat. And the rabbi said, somebody said to the rabbi, what, he doesn't rely on your kashrut, on your kashrut? He says, listen, he can do whatever he wants once he saved my life. And it's a bold, big story about how the rabbi was very sick, and he was dying from typhoid fever. It was a big thing over there, typhoid fever, and they didn't have any cure for it. And he's then he's this chassid that refused to eat. He stood outside of the, this happened years before, he stood outside of the window where this rabbi was laying dying, and he read to them this very positive chapter of the Tanya, how we have to accept everything that happens as coming from God and that our, our attitude can change everything. And because of that, he, he, he remained alive. So he said, he, if he wants to, he, he cannot trust my level of kashrut, level of kashrut. Okay, let's do another one uh, next day. Next day. Yep. It was the custom in Lubavitch to stay awake on the night of the seventh day of Passover, also on the night of Shavuot and the night of Hoshana Rabbah. By the age of nine, this is the previous Rebbe saying, I didn't go to sleep on the night of the seventh day of Passover. You should try to study Torah the whole night. Some people stay awake the whole night until uh, what's called Ola Tashachar, which I don't even know when that is now. I have to look and see what in, 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 uh, in Miron. It must be something like four or five o'clock in the morning. I have to stay. Okay, next. <clears throat> the Baal Shem Tov used to tr eat three festival meals on the last day of Passover. Outside of Israel, <clears throat> there's Shvi Shal Pesach and Achron Shabbat. That's the eighth day. Outside of Israel, it's an extra day. He used to eat three festival meals. The Baal Shem Tov, he called the third meal the Mashiach meal. Mashiach meal. The last day of Passover is the day from the, the meal of the Mashiach because this day, the radiance of the light of Mashiach shines openly. In 1906, there was a new thing in the in, Pesach, in the yeshiva, in Tom Chetamimim, in Lubavitch. That was the fifth Rebbe of Chabad. He began the yeshivas of Chabad, where they learned Hasidut as part of the day. And they were called Tom Chetamimim. That was the yeshivas called Tom Chetamimim. And he established this in what, when, uh, let's see. Like 1897, I think he established the yeshiva. Okay, anyway, the yeshivas, this the yeshiva had already been gone, going on for like almost 10 years. And the Rebbe said that the students should eat all the meals together. There were 310 students present that sit in 18 tables. My father, the Rebbe, he said, now we're going to eat a meal of Achron Shal Pesach. He ordered that there should be four cups of wine to give it to each pupil, and they should also eat three matzah, 
And he said, this is the, the, the meal of Mashiach. And that's what we do. This year in Israel, we make it on Shabbat, even though usually we would make it on the seventh day of Passover, but now we can't do it because you make it right in the end. So we won't have time to prepare. So we make it on Shabbat. 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 Have a good day, a good holiday with Mashiach now. God willing, we'll resume our learning on Sunday at 8.15 in the morning with God's help. Yechi Amelech, we should dance together with the Rebbe Melech Mashiach this Shabbat, God willing, even today. Chag Sameach.